Hello, my name is Sarah and I am a student here at Monash University and I am studying environmental science. And today I will be talking about microplastics and the effects on marine organisms. So what are microplastics? Um, as the name implies, they are small plastic pieces, less than five millimeters in diameter. And they can be extremely harmful to our ocean and aquatic life. Plastic is the most prevalent type of marine debris found in our oceans. These tiny pieces of degraded plastic have appeared in every region of our planet. How do microplastics end up in the oceans and where are they coming from? So some of the environmental pollution is from littering, but much is storms, water runoff, and winds that carry the larger plastic items such as water bottles and the microplastics into the ocean. Um, they also consist of the breakdown of fibers from clothing and uh, nurdles, which are small plastic pellets used in the manufacturing of plastic products, and also um, microbeads that are in personal hygiene products, such as toothpaste, shower gel, and face wash. How plastics turn into microplastics and how it disrupts the food chain. So here is a diagram and hopefully this can explain it a little bit better. So pretty much once the larger plastics make it into the ocean, sunlight, wind, waves, and heat break down that material into smaller bits that look to many organisms such as plankton, fish, and even whales a lot like food. So these then small particles bind with other harmful chemicals dissolved in seawater. And then some of the chemical additives leach from plastic and equilibrate in water. So marine organisms then ingest these chemicals and the plastic particles and then transfer it to higher order consumers. So you can see there in the green, in the biological section, there is an eagle. So ingested microplastic particles can pose um, substantial harm to organs and leach hazardous chemicals such as hormone disrupting bisphenol A, also known as BPA. This can also cause disruption in immune function and reproduction. If microplastics reach into the bloodstream or into other organs, inflammation can occur, which may cause stabbing and nudging against organ walls. And this can diminish um, marine organisms to have the urge to eat. Um, shown here is um, a picture of a whale with many meters of plastic. Um, it is quite potential that um, the whale couldn't eat and died of malnourishment. Um, its digestive system could have been blocked and it looks here as if it died a very terrible and painful death. Um, whales take in hundreds and thousands of water um, and they can't tell the difference between krill and plastic. So humans tend to like to eat the fat and muscles of fish and this is where chemicals from the toxins in plastic migrate to. So there has been several reports on microplastics obviously being in seafood but also being in sea salt and drinking water. Um, there was a study done on eight participants who consumed seafood but they also packed, wrapped, and even stored their food in plastic. They also drank from plastic water bottles and they used cosmetic products such as like face washes, hand lotions, and shower gel. Um, and the results showed that all eight of the participants tested positive for microplastics and this was found in their stool. So worldwide, an estimate of one trillion plastic bags are produced each year and nearly two million a minute with the use time of a typical bag being just 12 minutes. Um, this rubbish doesn't just simply go away. The entirety of our ecosystems worldwide are based on a healthy ocean. And if that part of the planet becomes deteriorated, then the entirety of life on this planet will suffer. It's also estimated that by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. So, what are ways that we can make a difference? So there's about eight here and 
Um, yep, yeah, this is just a few ways that we can make a difference here and help our oceans. Thank you so much for listening.